disappointed but not surprised. That's the story of last night's Los Angeles Kings loss to the Colorado Avalanche. We're going to look at what happened on today's show coming up right now on Locked on Los Angeles Kings. You are Locked on Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey everyone, my name is Sarah Avampato, host of Locked on Los Angeles Kings, covering this team since like 2016 or something, so I don't know about you, but I'm super excited about uh, playoffs. That is, if we can survive the next couple of weeks while everyone, again, continues to be dead. Uh, we're going to look at all of that on today's episode of Locked on Los Angeles Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, and thank you for making today's show your first listen of the day or the afternoon or the when you opened your podcast app as we uh, take a look at what's going on with the Kings. So this show, of course, if you are new here, thank you for joining. We cover the Kings on a mostly daily basis with the biggest news information, fun facts, weird trivia, interviews, etc. All about your favorite hockey team and mine, the Los Angeles Kings. And today we are looking at last night's loss to the Colorado Avalanche which was, I don't know about you, but basically it was a scheduled loss for me. Even before everyone on this team got hurt, uh, the Avalanche are one of the, if not the best team, uh, you know, numbers-wise, in the league for a reason. So I, I didn't have high expectations that we were going to, you know, stomp all over them. Uh, a fun competitive game would be nice, but, you know, at the end of the day, whatever. Um, I know in past seasons, when we've played the Avalanche, we have been sort of that, like, bad team that frustrates them uh, and ends up winning against them, which is always like a plus fun times exciting. Uh, but this game Kings just didn't have it from the very beginning. Avalanche dictated the terms of play. Uh, really Kings struggled to get any sort of offense generated. Again, the kids were kind of the more fun, uh, you know, active line, but just couldn't get anything going. And uh, Kings ended up walking away, getting shut out. Uh, and, you know, not great overall. But in the grand scheme of things, could be a lot worse because Vegas continues to lose games, which means that they're not creeping up on us in the standings. Edmonton has been winning, uh, so they're climbing their way up and kind of solidifying their hold on the number three spot right now in the division, uh, which means that if the playoffs happened today, we'd be playing the Edmonton Oilers, which, like, I don't know, I can't be too mad about. Like, if I had to pick, I'd rather play them than the Avalanche if we drop down to a wild card spot, or I'd rather play uh, the Oilers than the Flames, who are currently first in the Pacific and are looking pretty scary. We haven't seen them in a while, so don't really even know what to expect from them other than that they're good. They're a Daryl Sutter team, so you kind of know what to expect in those terms, but things are okay. Obviously, that game was incredibly frustrating. You saw the rare sort of display of emotion from Andre Kopitar at the towards the end of the game. Uh, he gets free on a shorthanded breakaway, uh, just loses a handle on the puck, kind of out of gas, just can't convert on it. Uh, and then play goes back the other way. Avalanche score uh, kind of helps further put a dagger in there. Uh, it, it's It's been a rough time for Andre Kopitar, for that whole top line, really. Kopitar, Adrian Kempe, and whoever the sort of rotating third player is, uh, I think they've been putting Alex Iafalo back up there. Uh, they just haven't been performing well, and I think they know that. Obviously, Todd McClellan knows that. He sort of said, called them out essentially in media of, listen, they know they need to step up. I know they need to step up. We expect more from them. And the Kings have been much more of a one-line team recently with the sort of emergence of that second line with Phil Deneau and Trevor Moore. And you know, if we can get the kids to click on those lower lines. But at the end of the day, this is a game that the Kings lost, which stinks. But they also held the Avalanche to just one even strength goal. Uh, the goals in the first and second period uh, were both scored on the power play. So again, discipline is an issue, although uh, officiating also seemed to be an issue in this one, but shots 27 to 23 in favor of Colorado. So it's not like the Kings got massively outshot, uh, throughout the game. Um, 
again, one goal at even strength. If we played this game at even strength, maybe there's a little more of a chance. Yes, the Kings power play and total lack of being good at all is frustrating uh, and is concerning. If anything is going to limit this team, aside from injuries, uh, in, in a playoff hunt or once they do get into the postseason, it is going to be uh, the terrible special teams. But holding one of the top teams in the league, one of the highest scoring teams in the league, to just one even strength goal uh, and you know two power play goals, this team has the most power play goals scored. The Avalanche, I think, have 51 power play goals on the season or something. It leads the league. Overall, disappointed that the Kings didn't get the win. It would have been great to have those two points and further kind of lock themselves into a playoff position. But look... We're playing with one defenseman who has a significant number of games and who was here on day one. Everybody else, AHL guys, rookies, tweeners, like teams not at their best. And so the score being three to nothing uh, or, you know, one even strength goal uh, to nothing isn't the end of the world. And so if you're out there panicking, I would urge you to just pump the brakes just a little bit, just a little We'll pump the brakes because this was not great, but it could have been so much worse, <laughs> really. And the fact that this team cobbled together, sort of held its own against the Avalanche, I think is is something to maybe not celebrate, but at least acknowledge and maybe respect. We're going to continue looking at the King situation, uh, especially with all of those injuries coming up next on the show. But first, before we get to that, I want to talk about snacks because I'm hungry. I skipped my lunch today. That's a really bad move. Don't tell my like nutritionist person that I did that, but I definitely skipped lunch today. Uh, and instead of, you know, sitting there at my desk being hungry, but also being like, but I don't want to do any work. Food is hard. I should have just done the smart thing and eaten a built Bar. If you don't know what built Bars are, they are delicious tasting protein bars that are also good for you and that also taste like you're eating candy. They're covered in 100% chocolate. They are full of protein, full of fiber, low in carbs, low sugar, and high in delicious taste. Whether it's just the standard built Bar protein bar, or if it's the built Puff, which is a great, great protein-infused marshmallow, or any of their other fantastic products, you can get something that both tastes good and makes your body feel good. They've got tons of great flavors, including mint brownie, coconut almond, uh, all sorts of cookies and cream types of varieties, berries, whatever it is, they've got it. And of course, new flavors are always coming out all the time, so keep an eye on Built.com because they are all about the taste. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. That's LOCKED15, promo code LOCKED15, for 15% off some tasty treats at Built.com. You're listening to Locked On Los Angeles Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, and thank you for making this show your first listen of the day. We also, in addition to this show, we have a lot of cool stuff coming up for you on the trade deadline on Monday, March 21st at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Tune in to Locked On Fantasy Hockey's live deadline reaction show to get all of the on-ice fantasy and betting analysis that you need from hosts Steel Roden and Flip Livingstone. Plus, you're going to see appearances from our roster of local team experts. I'm excited to bring you breaking news of whatever happens with the Kings, so keep an eye on your Twitter feeds, on the YouTube, on the whatever, uh, for latest updates from me on what Rob Blake and company choose to do. Uh, but for the biggest impact to your fantasy team, make sure you're checking out Locked on Fantasy Hockey on Monday. So Kings lose to, uh, you know, their old friend, Darcy Kemper. Uh, there's no rest for the weary, though, because the Kings' schedule just keeps right on rolling along. Uh, they, believe it or not, face the Sharks again on Thursday. The Sharks come back to L.A. Uh, Kings get another crack at them. I think this might be the last time they meet up this season, so we'll be done with Timo Meyer and Thomas Hurdle and whatever corpse they drag out as a goalie. Uh, we're, we're almost done with the Sharks. So maybe this time, well, actually, no, that's a lie. Because again, like the Kings, they're, they're all dead. There is no timeline uh, for anyone to return to the lineup. 
Uh, all of these injuries are very vague and nebulous. Uh, the only person who we know is kind of close to coming back is Alex Edler, which would be honestly fantastic at this point. The, uh, the team definitely needs uh, a veteran experienced presence back there on the blue line. But the Kings will be facing the Sharks in a very depleted fashion, most likely still on Thursday. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see some line changes, uh, particularly up front. Uh, there was, I think I might have mentioned this quote a little while ago on the show, but uh, there was a tweet from Jesse Cohen uh, from All the King's Men, uh, the podcast there, and uh, noted Twitter personality Jesse Cohen, uh, who, in in response to all of these injuries, basically put out a tweet saying, like, this isn't the time, the metaphor was, like, this isn't the time to try to make the same thing with a new recipe. It's time to try to make something entirely new, something like that. I probably got it, like, you know, not 100% right. But the gist is, of course, instead of trying to replicate what we've already done, instead of trying to be like, ah, this line needs a replacement for blah, like, let's just blow it up and start over and see what pairings work. We basically have the entire Ontario Reign defense right now. So what worked for Ontario? What pairings have worked for them? Uh, who spent the most time together out of these guys who are here? They're already familiar with each other. Like, let's let's build something new. Let's not keep trying to trot out the same lines that aren't working, the same power play combinations that aren't working. Let's just try something different. Try something new. Like, the worst thing that happens is you lose a game. And right now we're losing games anyway because, again, everyone is dead. So, you know, I, the more I think about that, the more I like it. The more I don't know, though, that the coaching staff and Todd McClellan are those types of people. Uh, you know, for as frustrating as it is when you see a coach who is constantly like, ha-ha, line blender, and changes up all the lines, like, the second anything goes wrong, McClellan kind of sort of tends to go the other way, it feels to me. Like, he waits too long. He keeps trying things that aren't working, and the whole, like, what's the definition of insanity, like doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And it feels sort of like that's where the Kings are at with their lines, with their power play options. And it really just seems like, you know, obviously this isn't a good idea. This isn't how you do it. But it's like, write everyone's name on a piece of paper and draw them out of a hat. Like, again, that's not the real solution. But if there is any time to kind of grow, go back to the drawing board with what you've got, with your players and your your setups and everything like that. Okay, leave Trevor Moore and uh, Phil Deneau alone. Leave them alone. They're fine. They're great. Everything else, go for it. Change it up. I don't care. Uh, I did like, I continue to like the Rasmus Kapari, Gabe Velarde, Quentin Byfield line. Uh, I, I think that they are three players who all have familiarity with each other in general. Uh, they both, they all three play kind of fun creative games that hasn't entirely been uh, built, uh, you know, beaten out of them yet in terms of, of hockey creativity and whatever. Uh, and, you know, if you look at Rasmus Kapari's goal, that's what we want to see more of is goals like that. So I like them. You can keep them. Everything else, change it around. Put, I like, I, I don't, I don't know. I'm not a coach. I'm not, you know, an expert, but I think that if there is any time to uh, to change it up, now is the time. Uh, one interesting note was that uh, one of the big things all season long has been how little power play time uh, Quentin Byfield has gotten. Uh, and he consistently gets left off the power play or he only gets on for the last couple of seconds. He actually did get to play a little bit uh, of time. He played 1 minute and 36 seconds on the power play last night. Uh, and I, I think that he should be there going forward, uh, especially as we're dealing with all of these injuries. Um, just just go for it. See what happens. Like, the worst thing that happens is he doesn't score. Okay, great. No one's scoring now as it is. I'd love to see him get another goal to, to get more in terms of points. He just, uh, you know, obviously had that assist in the game against Florida, broke a long uh, pointless streak for him. Uh, I, I He... He's not going to get more confidence. He's not going to get more experience if you just sit him and don't let him go out there and try. Uh, obviously, you don't want to throw him to the wolves. You don't want to throw any of these guys to the wolves. Uh, that was 
the argument that Todd McClellan had towards the beginning of the season, which I, I was okay with whenever he, you know, gave Arthur Kaliev a try on the top line and was like, ah, you know what, like, he's good, but he's not quite ready for this responsibility yet. And instead of throwing him out there to continue failing um, or to continue struggling, failing's probably not the right word, uh, you know, you moved him down, down the lineup. And for whatever reason, he's looked fine with that fourth line uh, when it was Lazat and uh, Brendan Lemieux. And it's the same with Quentin Byfield. Like, you're not going to throw him out there in the hardest possible situation, the most, you know, crucial pressure cooker situation immediately all the time. And then if he doesn't do well, you're going to be like, ah, it's a bust. Like, you have to be patient with him. But he's not going to learn if he's not gonna, if he's not getting the opportunity to do it. So especially in this weird time where everyone is hurt and the lines are getting changed and the power play is a failure and whatever, whatever, why not give Quentin Byfield more of a chance, give him more of a role, see if he rises to the occasion. He has the veteran leadership around him to help him, to encourage him, to point him in the right direction. Just try it, do it, see what happens. And maybe, just maybe, you'll start seeing that young star blossom underneath you. Like, not everyone comes in and is Connor McDavid, Austin Matthews, Sidney Crosby level of, I get it, on day one. Most guys need some time to really, you know, see everything click. He had a really great opportunity in that game against Colorado, just lost a handle on the puck, uh, couldn't get a clean shot off, and, you know, obviously didn't score on it. But I think the more time he, the more ice time he gets, the more opportunity he gets, we're going to see less and less of that. And we're going to see him convert more or, you know, set up place for his teammates more. But if I were Todd McClellan, as I was going into this next game, especially against the Sharks, especially this game against Vegas coming up over the weekend, uh, that's going to be enormous for the Kings. Those, uh, that's essentially a four point game. I would not be afraid to change things up, to just see what happens, see what sticks and maybe you'll just strike gold and happen to find more ways to keep this team afloat while they wait for, like, literally any of their defensemen to come back. So that's my thoughts on the current state of the Kings. Uh, we're going to close the show with a little bit of a conversation I had with Jess Belmoster from Locked On Calgary Flames. Uh, she and I, if you don't know, we co-host Wednesdays on Locked On NHL. It's what we call Western Conference Wednesdays as we look at everything going on in the Pacific and the Central Divisions. Uh, on today's episode, we talked uh, largely about the trades that Colorado just made with Anaheim and with Minnesota. Uh, but we also talked about the Kings being kind of unlikely playoff contenders. And so I'm uh, going to play a little bit for you of my conversation uh, with Jess to end the show. So the the, the Kings, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um... You know, at the start of the season, I think that, like, the Kings and the Ducks, they were, like, chilling in the mm -hmm. Pacific Division, a little, a little too high for some people's likings, and there was some confusion. You know, like, oh, like, is this sustainable? And everyone kind of wrote off the Ducks, and, and the Kings, really, because mm -hmm. they were, they're both younger teams. Mm -hmm. And the Ducks fell behind, and kind of slipped but the kings have kind of sustained their momentum in this game and this season has been really decent for them yeah it's it's been very fun and it's been like it, it's kind of shown you know i feel like one of the biggest differences between the kings and the ducks were sort of at similar spots in their like rebuild retool whatever is that the kings have much more depth to them like in, in their ahl team has a bunch of guys in it like Austin Wagner, for example, has been a regular NHLer. Mm -hmm. He's in the AHL right now because they just, you know, they didn't have room for him. There were better, more skilled players than him who kind of leapfrog him. But yeah. you could pick him up and plunk him on like the Senators or something and he'd be fine, you know. So they, they have a lot of depth right now. And the Ducks don't necessarily have that, which I think is why they've started kind of slipping is that like if their top players aren't clicking, there's no one there to kind of pick up the slack. Yeah. And right now some of the Kings top players are not doing very well. Um, Andre Kopitar has not scored very often lately. Uh, the Kings all-star uh, Adrian Kempe has been, uh, you know, a little more streaky than he has been the rest of the season, but other guys are stepping up and, and filling that void and helping kind of keep the game rolling. And I think 
the most important thing that's kind of shown this team's growth for me is every so often they turn in a real embarrassing loss. Like they got, you know, crushed by Boston a couple weeks ago, like seven to nothing or something or five yeah. to nothing, whatever. It was bad. Um, and then, you know, obviously the next time they beat Boston, it was that like buzzer beater overtime win, yeah. like just a real, I, I, I hate saying it, but like a real gritty win for the team. Um, and, and they seem to be bouncing back a little better from those losses and, you know, kind of showing they've learned from their mistakes. And A, it also has helped that Vegas is not doing very well right now. Uh, they have lost, what, I think four in a row? Which, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, Vegas, not, not, not so hot. They've actually slipped down to uh, fourth place in the Pacific Division uh, below Edmonton. Uh, they've lost their last four games. They're three, seven, and zero. Uh, they, if you look at it by, um, you know, like the wild card, uh, the, <laughs> the Vegas Golden Knights currently in the number two wild card spot. So they're just Dallas is just a point behind them. <laughs> like, well, yeehaw, yeah. Texas, you better <laughs> get it together, right? So, like, it's been helpful for the Kings that Vegas has slipped. Um, you know, Calgary is doing obviously really, really well. I don't necessarily think anyone's going to catch them at this point. Edmonton is Edmonton, whatever. We don't know uh, what's going to happen with them. No, no one knows what's going to happen <laughs> to Edmonton. They don't um, know. No, they, that's half of their problem is they don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the biggest challenge facing the Kings over the next couple of weeks is they look to A, head into the trade deadline this week and B, figure out what they're doing with their lives literally their entire blue line is hurt um they only have right now one defenseman who's healthy who was with the team on opening night oh no everybody else is hurt um some of those guys might be back a little bit sooner uh but there really is no kind of timetable or prognosis for a lot of these guys um drew dowdy is out with some sort of hand thing um mikey anderson is out matt roy is out tobias bjornfoot just got hurt um it it it, they're just all all of my friends are dead um (laughs) alex edler has been out since december he's close to coming back at least to give a little more veteran presence but like the combined nhl games of the guys who are left is like so small and they've basically run out of defensemen in the organization under contract like oh my god there are like three guys like th- yeah there's three players who are not currently called up to the kings one of them is like a 19 year old rookie from sweden one of them is a guy who like you know they drafted him but he he's probably going to be an AHL or like I don't right. think he has an AHL potential and the third one is Brant Clark who you know signed his entry level contract but like hasn't started it because he's playing in juniors like <laughs> Rob Blake might have to make trades because he has no one left to play for him um yeah and so the Kings actually like they pulled out a really again gritty win over the Florida Panthers uh which was surprising huge. Didn't, yeah huge like they're one of the best teams in the league and they did it with basically two defensemen <laughs> because everyone is hurt. So it's like if they can keep rolling like that or even just like tread water. Right. Um, I think it's going to say a, a lot about like the character and like the fortitude of this team uh, of how they deal with this. But I'm just enjoying the ride. Uh, I, I yeah. think that, you know, I don't think they're Stanley Cup contenders. I mean, if they are cool, but I think it'll be great for these young players you know, like the guys like Quentin Byfield and them to get playoff experience and to, mm-hmm. to see what it's like to play down the stretch, play meaningful games of hockey in April. Um, but it's yeah. it's weird and fun, and I like it. And it's nice to be like mad at the team for losing instead of just being like, eh, whatever. Right. <laughs> yeah. And something you said earlier really stuck out to me uh, about them bouncing back quicker. That is like one of the first things I realized about the flames. And Mm -hmm. I was like, wait, you're not dwelling in this. And I mentioned Uh it on Tuesday's show, actually, because I was like, they have the choice to like sit and dwell on this Mm -hmm. loss to Colorado, or they can just strap up their skates, Mm -hmm. tie them up and move on. And if, 
and, you know, learn what went wrong. What, like, if Mm -hmm. a team, especially a young team, can do that relatively early in their rebuild, retool sort of thing, like, that's that sounds like a path for success. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, like, my my criteria for, like, I feel like especially, you know, here at Locked On, every season we kind of start and do these sort of roundtable Mm-hmm. you know, questions of like, you know, what does success look like, look like for you and your team this year? And for me, like, as you know, following a sort of rebuilding team, success always looks like my answer is always, are you making the same mistakes in game 82 that you made in game 81 mm-hmm. yeah. or 81 <laughs> in game one? <laughs> I mean, also in game 81, but you know, um, right. it's like, are, have you learned anything? Or if you are still making the same mistakes, like, do you know what went wrong? Like, do you know how to fix it? Are you and, aware of those right, mistakes? Right. Or did you just be like, oh, puck's over there now. Like, right. Like, are you just like a dog who just walks around? La, la, la. Like, right. Yeah. Surprise. Yeah. And I, I think that, <laughs> you know, you, you, you with the flames have seen them kind of, you know, follow a, a trajectory of you know, the best team in the Pacific. And that it's that same thing of like, oh, you've actually learned from your mistakes. You're right. not like going on this seven game losing spiral because you can't figure out how to climb out of it yeah i know right like (laughs) (laughs) i don't know if i could do like at one point this season they lost like four or five in a row and i was like i can't do this again (laughs) (laughs) right (laughs) please make it stop yeah like no thank you (laughs) so it you know i think everyone can agree that hockey is a lot more enjoyable Mm-hmm. When your team's winning or the team you cover is winning, but I, just seeing Vegas out of uh, like a secured playoff spot, like oh, if the playoffs start t- started today, yes, technically they'd be in it, but right, but that can all change, right? And like, I mean, from the Kings' perspective, I kind of like where they're at right now in this yeah. like number two spot. Like, I, <laughs> I, I don't want to draw like the you know I. All due respect, I don't want to play the Calgary Flames in the That's first okay. round. I don't want to play the Colorado Avalanche in the first round. Like I don't blame you. <laughs> I'm terrified of Colorado. Yeah, no, I, like no, thank you. Yeah. Although again, like we do again, keep being on this path of Flames versus Kings in the playoffs. You know, <laughs> Daryl Sutter oh, versus New. Uh huh. Uh huh. I think Which, like it would just be fantastic. It'd be funny. It would be. Like because I think some of the players. Well, are the, who's like even left on the Kings? Um, for the Kings, it would be Kopitar, Dustin Brown, uh, Drew Doughty, and Jonathan Quick. Who... So there's still yeah, there's still a yeah. few. Okay, yeah. I don't know and... why when I looked at Dustin Brown, I thought he was like 25, like a baby. He's so old. <laughs> he's, he's he's almost as old as me, and that's you know in hockey age, like ancient. <laughs> Oh my god! Stop. <laughs> yeah, so no, I, I, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, today I referred to Sean Monahan as old, and I was like, "We're the same age." <laughs> it's fine. Hockey man, right? Oh, the worst. Good old hockey. That is it for today. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, we still have more. If you didn't catch it. Uh, yesterday, I talked with Jared Schaffern from the Ontario Rain. He's their communications guy, slash, you can hear him on the broadcast, slash, you know, basically everywhere. Uh, we talked about the Rain, about what it's like kind of navigating the world of call ups and returns to the AHL. Uh, we talked about the power play. So that's all in yesterday's show. I have more with Jared coming up this week, including answering some listener questions about the Rain and kind of looking forward to uh, what's next. Uh, for the team, including some breaking news that uh, he handed out to me that I've been curious about, and I think that you're all going to be curious about as well. So make sure you come back tomorrow for part two of my conversation with Jared Schaffern from The Rain. Uh, until next time, you can find me on Twitter at Right Said Sarah. The show's on Twitter at Locked on LA Kings. It is also available, of course, wherever you get your podcasts. It's available on YouTube and all that great stuff. So Go give us a follow, go subscribe, hit that notification button so you never miss a future episode, and come back tomorrow and every day for more Kings news here on Locked on Los Angeles Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.